We played Godzilla in Godzilla 2014 and in Godzilla King of Monsters, as well as a bunch of other cool things. So we'll bring up TJ Storm to the front. Here in 2019, when TJ was here. Woo! All right, we got some. That's good. Always nice to see people come back. All right, there he is, unmasked. <laughs> so, welcome to the show and welcome to the weekend. Anything you want to say to the audience to kick it off? Who here is to the pen? Woo! I can't see hands, I need to hear them. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Right on. You guys, thank you for showing up and supporting Godzilla, especially Godzilla King of the Monsters. We're all fans, and uh, I'll tell you, if you don't already know this about me, the very first movie that my dad ever took me to see was called Godzilla vs. the Small Monster, or Hedera. And that was the very first movie I ever saw. So I'm glad that we all get to be here and share this. Uh, and thanks to Bob, who puts this together. Can we have a hand for Bob? Because this man works so hard to make this possible. And I'm happy to be here, and thank you. All right, so I guess let's start it off. Uh, obviously, you were into Godzilla at a young age. But how did you get into motion capture acting, and what were some of your earlier roles? I went, I, I, in Los Angeles, I went to a, uh, a school, it was a class really, for how to direct. And it wasn't unlike this, there was a dude standing on a podium, kind of like this, and he was telling us how to direct, and he would do the thing, and I was sitting right in the front row, and this guy who was teaching this class was very passionate. So when he spoke, he spit. <laughs> and I was in the front row, and I was getting spit on by this, by this teacher, with, and the guy next to me, we, we were both flinching the entire time and kind of subtly doing this. And uh, at the lunch break, I turned to the dude, I'm like, you want to go towel off? And he just started laughing. I didn't know him. But he's, we, we talked during lunch and he's like, hey, I, I have this new technology called motion capture. Are you interested in uh, helping me figure it out? I'm like, it's, it's not some weird sex thing, is it? Cause that's something weird. And he's like, no, 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 it's, it's really cool technology. You're gonna, you're gonna dig it. So, we went and I figured it out along with him. And he pulled me onto some projects. Uh, one of the first projects was called Quake Arena. Um, uh, later, <clears throat> then he gave me a stack of uh, videotapes. And he's like, oh, are you kids? Videotapes are these boxes <laughs> that hold images on them. And we use them in the 80s to watch movies. But he, all, this entire stack of VHS tapes was Star Trek the first season. And he's like, I want you to watch the character named James D. Kirk. And I'm like, Captain Kirk? You want me to learn Captain Kirk? And I had to do it for a video game. I had to learn how to move like Captain Kirk because William Shatner had already done the voice tracks, but he wasn't going to do the motion capture because he didn't know what it was. So I learned how to move like Kirk. And uh, I had to lip sync all of his, his lines for the video game which we did. And then I got to go on to do, years later, I'm, I'm Colossus in Deadpool. Um, I'm the apex predator in The Predator, the 11 foot tall one that kills other ones. Uh, I've been Iron Man in Captain America Civil War. I've been Baby Groot, I've been Teenage Groot. Uh, I, I'm, in, I'm all over the Marvel Universe. Uh, it's really, really fun. So yeah, some of that. <laughs> So how did all that lead to Godzilla? Uh, that is a good question. I, I was working a lot, doing a lot of different characters, and uh, one of the biggest um, uh, stunt coordinators in Los Angeles, he, we, we grew up together in the Taekwondo studio, uh, his name is Garrett Warren. He called me and he's like, dude, um, got some questions for you. Do you know some people who are good at beast movement? And I'm like, yeah. So I gave him some names because I was really busy shooting this other stuff. He's like, thanks dude. Calls me back two, later, two, uh, two weeks later and he's like, uh, could you come in and help us with some creature movement? So I thought that he had called the people that I gave him on the list and now he wants me to coach them to get them to where he needs them to be on this project. So I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I showed up at the studio where he was at in the valley. We were in uh, the valley of Los Angeles. 
And it was the morning, and there were only three of us standing there in the middle of this room. And uh, he goes, okay, great. You're Mudo number one, you're Mudo number two, and you're Godzilla. And I'm like, what? And that is exactly how it started. We just started shooting right then and there. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what the project was. They didn't tell me anything until I was standing right then and there. That's, that's a dream come true. How many people have seen Godzilla 1980, or sorry, 2014? All right, we'll, we'll try not to give too many spoilers away. But you had a great story last time about when Godzilla blows his breath into, the, into Muto's mouth. How you came up with that and your sort of signature move that the kiss of death is called. Um, that's quite a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So. Well, it's um, just one, it's <laughs> one Muto. Isn't it? It's one Muto. Um, so we were shooting the the, the film, and uh, we we had to do all these fights and clashes and all this different stuff, and we're we're beating each other up in every creative way we can think of, and we'd already. Uh, finished with one fight, and this other fight, he's like, okay, we need a cool way to finish this Mudo. How are we gonna do it? So everybody came up with some ideas, and off in the corner, there was, for, for reference, there was a uh, a Barney costume. If you guys don't know who Barney is, <laughs> that's a purple dinosaur that smiles. And, and earlier in the day, uh, I saw it sitting there, and once I knew what we were doing, I was like, okay, I don't know what this is here for, but I'm not wearing this. I don't care. <laughs> and he's like, come on, man, it's for reference, so we know who Godzilla is. And I'm like, oh, we're gonna know who Godzilla is, but I'm not wearing this. So, uh, it, 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 in fact, it did not fit me. I have a lot of hair, as you can see, and I tried to squeeze it on my head just to make him happy, and it just would not go on my head. It, it would look so stupid. <laughs> My headshot out there would have looked very different if that were the case, but it just didn't go on my head. So um, the other guy was playing with it, and it fit on his head. I'm like, that's fine, man. You can wear it. I'm totally fine with that. Um, and we had two other actors. One was suspended on um, wires, and he was flying all the time. And that's how I was fighting him. And the other guy was walking on these low uh, kind of crutches, so he could have that that four-legged Mudo vibe. And um, he still had it kind of half on his head like a baseball cap while we were pitching ideas. And I was playing with it while he was trying, he was leaning down, so he's only about this tall at that time. And I was smacking the jaw, and I was like, and I pulled the jaw all the way back and I put it forward. I was like, hey, what do you guys think if I like open his jaws and I blow fire? And they're like, mm, sure, that sounds okay. And so we shot a whole bunch of ways that that fight happened. And that was one of them. I pulled it, and everything you see uh, in that movie is exactly what we shot. We, I just pulled the jaws open, breathe, and then I, and then he falls. I didn't know he was gonna die so fast. So when he falls, his head slides out of the mask, and I'm still holding the mask, and you can see me holding the head. And and he's the, the guy was there. He's like, "Okay, you're really tired." I'm like, "I am really tired." And he's like, "Just throw the head." I'm like. Okay, and I just tossed the head, and, he, and then he goes, show me what tired looks like. I'm like, okay, and I just fell over, and that's exactly what shows up in the movie. So there you go. So if you haven't seen it, you can watch it and look for that scene. But we're here to see Godzilla, King of the Monsters, right? So keep in mind, when TJ plays Godzilla, it's not just his body movements and legs, arms, all the expressions he makes are the expressions you see on Godzilla's face. So uh, it's really you know him right there on screen, basically. And uh, in this movie, you're fighting King Ghidorah, and uh, there were like three actors, each actor acting as one of Ghidorah's heads. And again, all their expressions are his expressions, but how was that coordinated on stage or while you're filming? That is largely Michael Doherty. Michael Doherty, the director of Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is a master at uh, storytelling, and directing is a very hard job, and uh, just to get a film is a job into itself. But once you're there, uh, 
you have to do your homework. And he had done his homework. He watched all the movies, he knew all the things, and he's like, okay, this is exactly what I want. And unlike the first Godzilla, where we kind of explored it, found it on our own, he's like, all right, now this time, I want the heads to wake up, but I want them to not wake up at the same time. I want one to come up, and then I want you to come up. And Jason Lyles, uh, do you guys know who Jason Lyles is? Jason Lyles is like six foot seven. He uh, plays, I think his name is George in the movie Rampage, the big white gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, he's a motion capture actor, incredible actor, and Alan Maxson, who plays the angry head, he, he's the second one to wake up, and he's like, Rah. So uh, the, these incredible actors are, are standing opposite me, and they're, they're standing like this, <laughs> next to each other, and they're, they're, they're all doing the, uh, the motions a little bit at a time, and I'm just sitting there like, don't giggle, don't giggle, this is, <laughs> don't laugh, because it's a serious fight, don't, don't laugh. But they looked amazing, because they're so into it, and they're, they were like, And so that's the kind of stuff they were doing, and it translates incredibly. And yeah, no, the movie's great. We had Michael Doherty here in 2019, and we had a lot of people here. That, the movie was fairly new then, so a lot of people hadn't seen it. But uh, once they did, it was like standing ovation, and just mobbed him in the lobby and everything. So it was a whole lot of fun. And these movies really are meant to be seen on the big screen. Because when you're sitting there, even with like, you know, half a dozen friends in your living room, it's nothing compared to a bunch of people in a theater, all like-minded, all Godzilla fans, all digging the movie. And uh, you'll find that out tonight. So, uh, does anybody have any questions for TJ while we have him here? Go right there. Can I please hug the human monster? <laughs> that would not be me, by the way, so let me move out of the way. Yay! Thank you! Yay! Awesome! Thank you! You're awesome! How often do you get lifted up? So rarely. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. I'm a strong bitch. I love it! <laughs> Maybe you can be in the next movie. Don't we'll even who... fuck with me! <laughs> we'll see who we bring in for a villain. Yes, right there. Did you ever get to wear the costume? <sighs> that would have been That would have been awesome. But they don't make those type of costumes for this kind of movie anymore. The kind of costume that I wore for this movie uh, looks basically like a tight jogging suit, and it's a, called a motion capture suit. Um, does everybody know how motion capture works? No. Yeah. All right, so which, what we do is we wear these really tight suits, and on every joint, there are two reflective markers, little balls made of sponge on all of our joints and all around our head. Um, and then we walk into a big empty room that is surrounded by about 200 little cameras, and those cameras are flooding the entire room with infrared light, and that infrared light bounces off those little markers and goes back to the camera, and those cameras can only see white light, which is the reflected light off of our markers. And they send that information to a computer, and on the computer, uh, in the room, I look like I'm doing this, but on the computer, you see Godzilla standing up in a weird way, and then I have to take the form and they'll go, and action. <laughs> and what you see on the computer is exactly that. Thanks for answering it. And he did have a tail, by the way. You can see in the uh, photos out there. Anybody else? Okay. Right here. If you could play any other monster besides Godzilla, which would it be? Hey, <sighs> that's a hard question. <laughs> It's gotta be Hedorah, right? You know what? No, he's nasty. He's, he's like a giant ooze. Um, once you played the king of the monsters, you don't want to play the other monsters. But I would like to fight Volante or or destroy her. That would be awesome. All right. Any more? Uh, back here. What was Millie Bobby Brown like on the set? <laughs> so they, the size difference between the person that I portray, which is, he's about 400 feet tall, and, and Billy Bobby Brown, who's probably 5'8", 
is so great that we don't show up at the same time, the same place. Otherwise, that would look ridiculous. But rawr, and they'd be like, ah, and then we would just move. So they shoot really, really far in advance, and then they cut the movie together. But when they're acting, they have uh, somebody with a very long, seriously, they have somebody with a long stick with usually a pink ball on the end. And they're like, this is Godzilla. <laughs> now, the reason Millie Bobby Brown gets paid is because she can make you believe that she's looking at Godzilla, where the rest of us would be like, there's a big ball. <laughs> so, so, but I got to meet her at the premiere, and she was a delight. And she's, she's, she seems much older than she really is, because she's got a lot of talent, and she's got a lot of gravitas, so she's just like, Oh, it's very good to meet you. She's very pleasant, but but she's like a forty-year-old woman who's seen the world. But she's very very young. She's a kid, so it was freaking awesome to meet. Yeah, it was great. We were at the premiere, and she was coming down the carpet, and she came over by us. And uh, Keith Aiken, who does Sci-Fi Japan with me, yeah, she sees him, and he goes, he says, "Hi, are you having fun?" And she goes, "Yeah, are you?" <laughs> and he was like, oh, she's asking me a question. Uh, yeah, we were having fun. All right, anybody else? Let's go way in the back, standing up. Did you do any specialized physical training or physical warm-up for your role? Um, fortunately for Godzilla, um, to make his movement believable, I have to slow down quite a bit. Um, so if I move like I normally move like this, his his footstep is probably about two city blocks. So boom, I'm through Las Vegas, it's done, it's over. I, everybody's dead. And so to give it that weight, I have to really slow down every is really slow. So I had to practice that, but one of my first jobs in, when I was a kid actually, it sounds dumb. Do you, have you guys ever been to a mall and seen a, 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 now it's a woman's store, it's called Beebe's. You guys have seen Beebe's. Okay, so um, it used to be a, a men and women's clothing, and in Hawaii, they hired me to be a mannequin in the window. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Like, see those people? That's what they were doing. And I'm like, you want me to smile like that? Because that's weird. And they had cool music in the store, and I was a dancer. So I was like, can I move? They're like, no, you can't move. You're a mannequin. I'm like, I can get more people if you let me move a little bit. Believe me, I'll be a mannequin, but I'll move. And they're like, okay, sure. If you can do it, sure. So I did this. <laughs> now that kind of movement thank you that that kind of movement made my toes hold on to the ground so I could rotate and twist and back and forth and look unreal but that also got me hired for Avatar so when you see the general climb into the mech I am the mech and I move forward and I do that now it's motion capture but that that was the training that got my my feet able to hold me through a very long step even when I'm moving very slowly and then land with that weird shake all of that's dancing and it's, it's this kind of dancing that's how I learned how to do all that stuff but yeah that's the training but for other projects um Yes, I, I'm Darth Vader in a lot of the projects for video games, um, and I've had to train swords. I've trained bow staff. I've trained martial arts my own entire life, so lots of kind of training for different projects. I'm even training as a quadruped right now for a project that's coming up, which means I have to train on those walking stilt crutches, and I have to strengthen my arms and my back because I'll be on that for weeks, and it's kind of weird. All right, we maybe do like two more. Right here. Uh, you mentioned that you didn't know what project you were going into when you first went into the Godzilla project. But like, 
Can, can you walk us through that moment when you found out, like when someone told you, did you just need a second? Because clearly you have history with the property. Yeah. Okay. Sure, that's what surprise was that like? look on your face. <laughs> Absolutely. A, so, how do you say it? So, in LA, they have, uh, LA has a stereotypical thing for most people. They say they're fake. The reality is many of them are jaded. It's a lot of rejection. It's a lot of, I'm very cool. You need to hire me for this because I'm so cool. And you have to, you're, you're constantly shifting back and forth and trying to figure out what is the right reaction to this. The, when they told me that at that moment, when they told me that, the I'm, I'm I don't you guys don't know me very well. I'm a mega nerd. I play Dungeons and Dragons. I play video games. Mm -hmm. I grew up watching comic books and watching the Robotech and, and Thundercats and everything else. I, I love that stuff. So the inner child in me was like, Yeah, go so fuck it. I'm awesome. It's gonna be freaking awesome. That's the reality. What they saw was. So how do we want to do this? So we, <laughs> is this a new Godzilla? Or are we going to just do the, the older style? And if so, which period? But the kid in me is like, <laughs> so yeah, you're, they can't see that. And I couldn't show it because they, they want to know that they're not hiring a maniac, but I was so excited because, uh, like I mentioned, the, well, I don't know if I mentioned this. Um, did I mention this? The, yeah, I did. The, the first movie I saw was Godzilla vs. the Small Monster. So with that in mind, especially I was thinking, I'm going to tell my dad that he raised me right. <laughs> Show um, you my Godzilla roar. Come on, man. You gotta do it up here. You gotta come up and be on mic. So you gotta face this way. I'm gonna hold it in front of your face so it doesn't get too loud. But you have to do the body too, because you can't just do the roar. They don't hire you just for the work. So put left foot forward just a little bit. Is this it? You're ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, man, that was nice. Thank you. All right, he had the pitch down and everything. All right, well, let's get into the movie. Let's watch Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and let's have a big hand for TJ Storm. TJ in the lobby, all evening, signing, posing. Glad handing, <laughs> he's ready. So he made a dance video if you really want. So, all right, enjoy the.